Hello everyone, it's Thursday and you're watching Within the Frame. I'm Kim bo -kyung. Amid the ongoing war in Ukraine, Russian President Vladimir Putin recently faced a major mutiny. Led by the Wagner Group boss Evgeny Fregosin, this private military company occupied the command center for all Russian forces on Ukrainian soil and advanced to Moscow. To Putin's relief, the mutiny ended as Prigozhin announced a deal brokered by the Belarusian president. However, the series of events has left Putin looking weak, and many are expecting this to be advantageous to Ukraine. For an in-depth analysis of Prigozhin's insurrection and its impact, we invite Professor Shin sang yeop from Kyung University and Hannah Hopko, co-founder of the International Center for Ukrainian Victory, who is also the head of the Foreign Affairs Committee for the Ukrainian Parliament. Now, uh, first question to our Professor Shin. Mm -hmm. now, before we talk about the Wagner Chief's short-lived mutiny uh, over the weekend, what exactly is this private military group Wagner? I mean, what ties did it have with the Russian leadership? Mm -hmm. Well, Wagner is a Russian state funded the uh, paramilitary organization actually it was uh, established in 2014 and the uh, the leader of this group is the mr. Prigozhin mm -hmm. actually uh, you may know it but his nickname is the Putin's chef right uh, I think uh, we have to think about the special relations between Mr. Putin and then Mr. Prigozhin. Actually, Prigozhin hails from the uh, St. Petersburg, which is the hometown of the President Putin. Mm -hmm. So they have the same hometown. Mm -hmm. And their relations started the uh, uh, roughly uh, year 2000, uh, early 2000. Actually, um, and the Mr. Prigozhin uh, the, uh, opened a hot dog shop, mm -hmm. and then his business was very successful. Mm. So uh, he could open several restaurants, and then Mr. Putin started to uh, have a meal at one of the uh, these restaurants. Particularly in year 2003, the Mr. Putin trusted Mr. Prigozhin enough to celebrate his birthday mm. on his one of his uh, uh, restaurants. Mm. And after that, uh, the relations uh, was developed further, so Mr. Prigozhin could have a chance to supply food to the Kremlin. Mm. So uh, we can say that over the last decades, uh, the, the relationship between these two, I mean, the Mr. President, I mean, the Putin and the Mr. Prigozhin, owing to these special relations, the uh, Wagner Group could be very successful over mm. the last two decades. Mm. I mean, one decade, I think. Right, I see. So it seems Wagner Group was able to enjoy a lot of benefits because mm of the strong and close ties that it enjoyed with Russian leadership. Right. Now, Professor, what was behind Wagner Chip's decision to launch an insurrection, given that, I mean, it's quite unusual to see this? Mm -hmm. given we, the, yes. Yeah. Yes, we can uh, say there are several reasons. Uh, the first uh, reason uh, is the uncomfortable relationship between Mr. Prigozhin and then uh, Russian military top leaders. Mm. Uh, in fact, the... Uh, uh, Mr. Prigozhin openly criticized the Russian uh, Minister of Defense for the mishandling the war against Ukraine mm -hmm. because of this uh, uh, inefficient uh, mishandling of the minister, Russian Minister of Defense. He said that the uh, Ukraine war could be failed. Mm -hmm. And in such a kind of the uh, very uncomfortable relations, uh, recently there was an, a kind of some missile attack, mm -hmm. Russian missile attack against the uh, uh, I mean, Wagner Group. As a result of it, about the three, uh, I mean, uh, three, 30 people, 30 soldiers of the Wagner Group were killed. Mm. In, uh, in May, the, the Mr. Prigozhin get very angry. Mm. And the last one is, uh, uh, according to the report, the Russian Ministry of Defense uh, mandated all contracts for the uh, private military uh, the organizations. Mm -hmm. Actually, this was, uh, I mean, against this one, Mr. Prigozhin was against it. He did not refuse to sign on it. Mm. So these kind of reasons made him to go uh, uh, the, uh, with the military insurrection, I think. Right, those were the reasons behind the insurrection. Mm -hmm. Now, Hannah, uh, many say Prigozhin's Wagner forces were never going to be a match for the Russian uh, security forces in the first place. And thus, they say the fact that his men were able to advance to Moscow is very much surprising. Now, how did you see the progress Prigozhin and his men were able to make? So, let me be very frank. Uh, Wagner Group, they are the terrorist organization funded by a Russian state. 
So this is why we in Ukraine, by asking Western governments to recognize Russia as a state sponsor of terrorism, demanding that this uh, designation finally should happen, especially in the uh, United States, because uh, Wagner Group, they are criminals and not uh, just uh, showing that Russia is a failed state and showing the degradation of uh, Russian Federation and uh, actually the weak uh, weaknesses of Putin regime. And there is also battle for resources between different groups, clans inside Kremlin. Let's mention Siloviki or defense, security and intelligence um, agencies. Also oligarchs surrounded by Putin and uh, also government. So there, uh, the longer Russian aggression against uh, Ukraine continues, the more degradation of Russia we will see and its work against uh, Russian regime. Because what finally the whole world saw, the uh, Putin weaknesses, and uh, finally Putin publicly made a statement that uh, Wagner Group is state sponsor. But let me remind Lavrov, speech just a year ago, that uh, Wagner Group has nothing related to the Russian state. So uh, finally Putin confirmed that Russian state is behind Wagner Group, and they should both, Russian state and Wagner terrorist organization, take responsibility for their war crimes, not just in Ukraine, but also in Belarus, also in Africa, countries like Mali, in Venezuela. So I think uh, this should be finally stopped, these war, crim uh, war crimes that Wagner Group, uh, uh, funded by Russian state, doing everywhere in uh, the planet. It's not just about Ukraine, it's about uh, um, uh, accountability and justice uh, for um, uh, this group. Right, I see. I cannot agree more that the war crime should be stopped. Now, uh, Professor Shin, mm -hmm. the mutiny came to an end as dubbed Europe's last dictator, the Belarus President Alexander Lukashenko, brokered a deal with Prigozhin. Uh, who is he to broker this deal? Well, the, he is the uh, President of Belarus mm -hmm. uh, since actually uh, 1994, when the uh, Belarus uh, became an independent country. And they adopted the, uh, I mean, the system to elect the president. He was elected as the first president of the Republic of Belarus. Mm -hmm. Since that time on, he has been the president of the, uh, uh, the Belarus. So, mm -hmm. um, over his, uh, I mean, the uh, tenure, I mean, a long tenure, actually, from the beginning of 2000, when the, Mr. Putin became the uh, leader of the Russian federal, Red, Russian uh, the government, and the, the relations between two uh, leaders started. Uh, of course, uh, during, in the relations during the last uh, several decades, there has been up and downs. Uh, but in the recent year, the Belarus, I mean, particularly personally, the President Lukashenko became the uh, few remaining strong ally mm. to Mr. Putin. Mm. Uh, and Mr. Putin, uh, well, announced very recently he dispatched in strategic nuclear weapons mm, right. to the Belarus. Mm. That much, they, their relations has been developed. But mm. I do not think that the, uh, they try I mean, <laughs> that much, but anyway, mm. uh, they have maintained the uh, uh, relations, mm. uh, more I mean, closer relations in the recent times. Mm. Because of this one, I think he could be uh, played I mean, a brokerage role, mm -hmm. mediating role uh, in between the two, I mean, Mr. Uh, Prigozhin and then uh, President uh, Putin. Mm. And, the, uh, uh, and I think uh, we have to think about the reason why he was so much aggressively to take this role. Mm. Uh, because that if the situation, I mean, in Russian situation is getting worse, I think it could be direct threat to himself mm. and his government. Mm. Uh, so I think he want to uh, solve this problem as soon as possible. Mm. For this purposes, he want to take the, uh, I mean, the mediating role mm. between the two, two, I mean, Mr. Prigozhin and then President Putin, and successfully. Uh, well, to some degree, I mean, mm. he uh, successfully contributed to solve this problem, but. Uh, I mean, uh, I will do this, uh, talk this one later, uh, how much impact given to the uh, Putin's leadership, mm -hmm. but certainly owing to uh, this, I mean, the uh, Mr. 
uh, Rukan Sekar's role, uh, they solved the, uh, this problem temporarily, mm -hmm. but the, this issue remained one, one big problem to Mr. Putin. Right. Putin should completely deal with this one mm -hmm. in order to restore the stability in Russia, I think. Mm, I see. Well, we will tap on that issue yes. uh, later on. But before that, Hannah, what were the details of the deal? Uh, and the agreement raised many doubts and worries. What were they? So actually, I would like to add to what the professor just said, mm -hmm. that Lukashenko uh, regime in Belarus remains Russian proxy. Mm. And uh, the territory of Belarus is used against Ukraine for training and logistics. And also, you know that on May 25th, uh, the ministries of defense, uh, Belarus and Russia, they signed a memorandum about stationing a non-strategic nuclear weapon at the territory of Belarus. So this is why I think Western leaders, they uh, already started to prepare, especially Poland, Baltic states like Lithuania for uh, attack from Belarusian side using hybrid warfare against NATO members. So I think we have to learn these lessons, uh, the lessons from this recent attempted rebellion or mutiny uh, conducted by Prigozhin that Russia is very weak and we have to be ready for the scenario like uh, happened with the Soviet Union in 1991 when Soviet Union collapsed, became an end of communism regime, but not the end of colonialism or the end of Russian imperialism. So I think only Russian complete military defeat in the territory of Ukraine could start uh, the beginning of Russian de-imperialization when Russia will never attack, a attack any neighbor. And I think uh, the more weapon Ukraine received, especially long range missiles like attackums uh, uh, also we need fighter jets modern fighter jets to get air parity because you know that russia still has air superiority uh, to, uh, because and we need to get these fighter jets and the air defense system uh, to uh, conduct successfully counter offensive operation and liberate all other territories not to allow this mafia club because russia is supported by belarus by china providing humanitarian aid mm. also by North Korea and also Iran. Iran mm. is supplying Russia with kamikaze drones, destroying constantly uh, Ukrainian critical in infrastructure. So I think the victory of Ukraine uh, has geopolitical implications mm. and actuality for the whole planet, not just for the European continent. Right, I agree that it has a geopolitical implication and that uh, Western countries need to support Ukraine as mm. much as they can. Now, uh, Professor Shin, moving mm. on to the consequences of the short-lived mutiny. Mm. The mutiny itself erupted and receded within just 24 hours, but many say the consequences will reverberate for much longer. And many mm. media outlets say this incident shows how Putin's grip on power, like you have said earlier, is weakening. What impact did this mm. incident have? Well. Uh, we have to wait and see, mm. uh, but whether or not Mr. Putin is, uh, is able to restore the stability in uh, Russia, I think that will be very important uh, for him to uh, keep his the, uh, power. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think, um, you know, um, uh, uh, according to, I mean, the uh, uh, deal, made between uh, President Putin and uh, Prigozhin. Mm -hmm. uh, the uh, Russian government, although the uh, Wagner group, uh, Wagner, uh, the Prigozhin and the Wagner uh, chief commanders and soldiers to choose one of these choices. One, mm. one first one was uh, the uh, 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 go to Belarus. Mm. Second one was the uh, go back to home. Mm. And third one was fight with Russians, right? right? Mm. And then uh, this is a kind of temporary measures, I mm. think. Uh, on the part of Putin, I think uh, to show uh, that he keeps his power, uh, mm -hmm. I mean, he did not take any damages in his leadership because of this insurrection. Mm -hmm. I think he should bring 
uh, the uh, Wagner Group uh, chief and the Wagner Group commanders to the justice. Mm. I think it's not, it, it is not easy though, but mm. uh, I think uh, uh, it is one of the remaining questions, I mean, uh, uh, the difficulties uh, for the Russian uh, leader, I mean, mm. Mr. Putin. So I think uh, we have to wait and see, mm. but certainly uh, the, uh, um, the Mr. Putin is making every effort to restore the stability in Russia, mm. but uh, we have to wait and see. Right, we'll have to wait and see. Mm. Now, uh, Hannah, so cracks in Putin's rule, how is this in any way going to, you know, affect Ukrainian war? I mean, could Ukraine see this as an opportunity to take advantage of? So uh, I would like to add, actually, Prigozhin attempted rebellion uh, send a clear message because Prigozhin is not alone. Behind him, there are also uh, Russian uh, mm -hmm. military uh, people. So they send a clear signal that they want to see the shift of uh, power and change. Uh, uh, so actually, they uh, they want to see uh, changes in 2024 uh, when there will be presidential election in the Russian Federation. So actually, um, this attempted rebe rebellion, like a killing the chances for Putin and for his more than 20 uh, something years of being in power. Because actually, uh, Putin ruling Russia uh, made Russia uh, in isolation, made Russia very poor. And actually, I think uh, they have to think about the, not just about changes of the ruler, but also how to, uh, uh, because we will demand in Ukraine tribunal, we will demand confiscation of Russian assets, also including central uh, bank money and a reparation, uh, because we need to rebuild Ukraine using Russian money and Russian citizens, citizens should take moral responsibility for the uh, war crimes, genocide, act of aggression against us. Right. Now, Hannah, uh, I'd like to shift gears to Ukraine's efforts to rebuild the country and to be a member of NATO country because we, uh, we have been keep talking about uh, the, the support that Ukraine needs right now to be against Russia. And though the war continues, uh, Ukraine is already planning for its future after the war and it's urging for investment from private companies as well. Why is it important, in your opinion, to start discussions about rebuilding the country right now? And what do you believe Ukraine needs the most in terms of this issue? So uh, I'm very thankful to South Korea. I visited Seoul last year. Also, I visited uh, um, Asian countries. Mm -hmm. um, um, also expressing our gratitude for your support mm -hmm. and sanctions against Russian Federation. But also for the future reconstruction, we need um, uh, higher technologies. Ukraine is very well known for critical raw materials, but I think um, uh, semiconductors for our defense industry, for uh, health care, for reconstruction of uh, building uh, roads, uh, bridges, everything. But I'm now traveling to different regions of Ukraine and I see how local communities are actively involved in um, engaging Western foreign partners in rebuilding right now because uh, democratic resilience of Ukraine is about uh, fighting at uh, different fronts and one of the fronts when Russia tries to kill us because we are just Ukrainians we are saying not just no and fighting we are rebuilding our damaged critical energy infrastructure we are investing in schools so the, the most uh, the strategic uh, uh, value of Ukraine is our people hmm. human capital so this is why we are fighting uh, to have uh, the war finished faster with mm. Ukrainian victory. And then all other people mm. will be focusing on innovations, um, digital technologies in rebuilding Ukraine. This is how I do hope also South Korea will play a key role also uh, among those fund uh, partners who mm. will take part in rebuilding and reconstruction efforts. Right, I do hope so too. Now, uh, Professor Shin, I'd mm. like to also tap on the NATO membership that Ukraine is currently asking for. Uh, apparently, NATO is showing hesitance in allowing Ukraine to join the uh, group. Why mm. is this so? Mm -hmm. 
Well, to answer your question, I think uh, I have to uh, explain situation before 2014. Mm. Uh, in 2014, um, uh, the many Ukrainians uh, were against to uh, I mean see the uh, Ukraines are uh, joined to NATO mm. uh, because that the Ukraine economy is heavily rely on Russian economy. And then even in Ukraine, there are political group who, for the Russian government and who are against Russian government. So mm. the political stability was not secured at the mm. time. So uh, the situation, I mean, the people's opinion, more than half of the Ukrainians were against to see the Ukraine to join to the NATO. Mm -hmm. But in 2000, uh, year 2014 became the turning point. Mm. There was the uh, Crimean Peninsula crisis. Right. Mm. And then the war at the, uh, Don, uh, the, the Donbass uh, reasons. Mm -hmm. After this, uh, the crisis in 2014, the Ukrainians thought uh, about the membership of NATO. Mm. Ukraine's membership of NATO changed. Mm. After this one, more than 60%, uh, according to the uh, reports, mm. the about 60%, more than 60% the Ukrainians were for uh, the Ukraines joining to NATO. Mm -mm. Uh, but right now, the uh, uh, about the uh, I mean, the giving a membership, I mean, Ukraine uh, to the Ukraine, the giving membership of NATO. The uh, uh, among NATO member countries, uh, they have quite different opinions. Mm. As you know very well, the such a countries, I mean, Western European countries, I mean, Western NATO member countries such as France and Germany, uh, they are quite hesitating to give the membership to mm. Ukraine mm. because the you know if they give the membership. NATO membership to Ukraine, mm. if some crisis happens, crisis happened in, in Ukraine, automatically USA and European Union should participate jointly mm. in the situation, mm. dealing with the situation. Mm. Well, that means that they, they participate, they're waging the war together. Right. And then they could expect some, some, some benefits, mm. sort of called, economic benefits or strategic or defensive benefits. Uh, well, from their point of view, I think uh, they could not expect the uh, a very high, uh, huge, tangible benefits. Mm. Uh, if if uh, if they participate in a war, it, it needs sacrifices of the many right. young lives mm. and a huge amount of money mm. and uh, political risks. Mm. Uh, of course, challenges by the Russian mm. government or something like that. Mm. So that's one of the main reasons why the uh, the countries, Western uh, European NATO member countries, are hesitating. Mm. But the other group of the uh, NATO member countries, such as Poland and Czech Hungary, which they are uh, located in the eastern part of Europe, that mm. means they are close to the front lines of the uh, Russians. Mm. Uh, they want to uh, have some uh, more of the so-called bumper zone, mm, you know right. what I mean, by right. giving membership mm. Ukraine, uh, uh, the NATO membership to them. So mm. right now, uh, there are uh, very diverse, different mm -hmm. uh, opinions, but President Zelensky has empathized that, you know, the NATO should allow the uh, right. Ukraine to join to the uh, NATO. I think the old atmospheres and circumstances atmospheres right now about the uh, Ukraine's membership of NATO seems to be very favorable for the Ukraine. I mm, think so. Right. Uh, if I dare to say, it's a matter of time. Mm, <laughs> it's a matter of uh, Ukraine time. Ukraine will join to NATO. Uh -huh. uh, uh, well, as you know, well, Mr. Zelensky said that even after war, <laughs> Ukraine should have a chance to join to NATO. But right. I think mm. if situation is getting better, Ukraine mm. could have a chance to join mm. to NATO. I mm. think this is my wish. Right, that is my wish as well. Mm -hmm. I hope to see the Ukraine to be a member of NATO uh, mm -hmm. uh, as it wishes. All right, unfortunately, this is all the time we have for today's edition. But thank you, Professor Shin and Hannah. Thank you for your insights. We really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you. you. All right, that's all for Within the Frame tonight. We'll be back tomorrow with more in the stories. Thank you for watching and goodbye.